Hello, 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 hello. So here we go. So this is just recapping on the samples of uh, Silver Diamond 2 and 3 from Laura's Art Corner that I tested on my previous video. I made these coasters and I used the leftovers in these molds here. So I'm just showing you the coasters as a recap of what I did. But if you want to see more, uh, check out my other video um, on my channel. Um, while I'm talking, just like, subscribe, please hit the notification and leave me comments about my video would really help me get started um, and get some more subscribers that I desperately need right now. So yeah, these coasters were really great and I they were really, really happy with the way they turned out. So yeah. All right, let's get on with it. So my resin of choice is Crystal Set Resin from Composite Warehouse. The details are here. If you want to pause it, you can get their contact details in Australia. They do supply to Australia wide um, and they will deliver to metro areas, I believe. Um, it's a food safe resin and you can use it for multiple purposes. Uh, it's very low viscosity and the bubbles come out really well and it's crystal clear. It's beautiful resin and as I say, it's the resin choice that I use. So here I'm just showing you this is the alcohol spray that they supply to that I use and it's really uh, quality so you can see it's delicate this um, this is the crystal not crystal sorry the diamond two and the diamond sorry the diamond three at the bottom and the diamond two at the top and you can see the difference within uh, one is particularly more shiny and one is less dense So what I'm doing today is I'm going to be covering the backs because I just put the uh, leftover from the previous pour into these. So I want to put some colours on the back and I want to test my micas and my glitters. Um, so I'm just going to do random colours. Uh, I'll show you the colours I'm using and the um, companies that I use. Um, I'm using my respirator. PP is really important. I've got my gloves on, um, especially while mixing. Uh, which is why I'm doing a voiceover because you won't be able to hear me. Uh, so I always put my part B in first and then I pour my part A in. I find I get a better quality measuring and um, this is a three to one ratio by weight. So I'll put in my B followed by my A and the A is a lot thicker. The B is very runny, but the A is quite thick. And I'm getting to the bottom of the bottle here, so my apologies that my hand's in the way there. Uh, but what I do have is I have larger bottles and I top these smaller bottles up um, when I need to. That way I don't have to lift the heavy bottles all the time. Um, and I find that works really well. These are Coles Antibacterial Multipurpose Wipes. I use these, I don't use baby wipes. I use these for cleaning all my products, my hands, my tools, my um, silicone jugs, everything. And I find them perfect. I don't have any dry areas on my jugs or my silicone. It doesn't ruin anything. I just love them. They're very, very versatile. Now mixing, um, I don't go slowly mixing. I don't worry about bubbles. That's me personally. Um, because if you watch a lot of videos, when they're mixing in the micas and the colors, they go fast, they don't go slow because you need to mix them thoroughly. Um, so I don't worry about the bubbles. Plus it's a low viscosity, so the bubbles come out really easy anyway. You just have to sit it for a couple of minutes and the bubbles will rise and then spray it with a bit of alcohol and the bubbles pop. So make sure you scrape down the sides of, the, of your container too regularly when you're mixing and mix for the time recommended for your resin. Um, this one I think I do about three minutes and um, it always works out. I have no problems with it at all. But make sure you mix it thoroughly. You don't want any soft spots in your resin when you've got your finished product. There you can see there's lots of little bubbles in there. But I'm just going to sit it and let it rest now while I get right, ready. So, so here's some colours that I am going to use I today. Use uh, I ended up not using the cherry black. Uh, because I couldn't get the lid off it. It's sealed because I've leaked it somehow. So I'll have to get that off another time and use it on another project. Um, so let's go through the colours. I'm going to show you this anyway because this is before I worked out that I couldn't open it. First of all, so, so yeah. colour obsession. Colour obsession. Yeah. 
This one is uh, black, black cherry. cherry shimmer. I Might didn't be like use. a dark black red. It's a really nice colour though. This one uh, is this one is Colour Obsession shimmer. and it's, it's I like think it's iced latte shimmer. This is again from and it's Colour really Obsession. pretty. First time I've used it, I'm very uh, impressed with Lorenz, it. Uh, this is Lorenz Expressions and this, this is, is a, Blue Ice. These two stunning are and it's got a remarkable ice. shimmer. And this one is You'll see that when we actually mix the colours. If you don't want to watch me mixing all the colours, uh, please blue. fast forward it. Don't feel this like you have to sit and watch it. Some people love to watch the mixing. Um, this is also Colour Obsession and I use this for like um, when I'm doing Australian Outback sort like of colours, like our red dirt, I use this one. And, you know, um, it's a beautiful colour but I have, it's the closest to orange I've got at the moment for pumpkins. So I, I, I haven't got an orange and I don't have a yellow. Such, I do so need to get some though. So um, if anyone can recommend to me a really good orange, a really good yellow. Uh, let me know in the comments and um, then now uh, we'll get it. So this, this, is uh, is uh, this is a deep turquoise. It is dark when you mix it and it's dark when you pour it into molds in small spaces and thicker. But if you had it on a, on a, a board um, a and have a thin layer of it, it's a really delicate colour. It's nice. We've just seen, I don't know, we this is uh, from Laura's Art Corner, Candy Apple Blossom. This is like a red with a shimmer. Um, it, in, it is stunning. It's um, I'm really beautiful. impressed with it really and uh, it'll be used really in a lot more of my projects. This is a mica powder and it's, uh, yeah, highly colors. recommend. Contact Laura's Art um, Corner um, and ask her about this one as well as the um, really silver diamond glitters. The other thing um, these are also from Laura black, too, black, black, so I've got the opulence black, um, and which is a is very um, almost like dust um, uh, glitter, and the champagne. opulence champagne again almost like a dust in these glitter. Also and I like Laura's the dusty artwork. type ones because I find and they don't the sink as, as bad and they suspend in the resin perfectly. I so I really like the smaller delicate uh, glitters myself because I find I get a better effect in the resin with them. The containers because the containers themselves yeah. contact are Laura's weight. art corner. I'm telling you, so there, contact her, she's absolutely are amazing. A lot she'll show you on video if you ask her nicely if uh, what in, she's got yeah, in stock, um, so you Laura can choose country, uh, something to suit your projects. But this one's gorgeous, really can't talk highly well. enough about it, as you can see. But I get them like this because of so shipping to Australia. Let's see what else we've got. products were in the in the shipping cost. So there you go. It's a beautiful iridescent piece. So that's what we're going to do. It. So there's a few different colours there. Um, All right, so what else? One of the um, most. So I don't need a lot of colour, of a lot of the resin pick some to mix colours. the colours in. These are my little pots. I don't know how many we've got. One, two, three, uh, four, I'm going to mix five, them individually in these little nine, paper cups, little shot three, glasses, six, okay. paper shots. So I'll probably do two, two of the same colour and three of them, maybe. Yeah. I have got more, but I can't be bothered getting them out. Actually, I could reuse these ones. And I do these reuse these paper cured. shot cups too. These are the just mm. ones that I use for the, the coast. These have had the, the silver, um, has silver glitters in from the yesterday's pores. are perfectly dry. Of course, the glitter is sealed so in the this, resin, it so it's not going to mix the, into your um, next mix. So I reuse them. I don't have any issues too, or problems so with it at all. And it seals, because you've let the resin dry at the bottom, it actually seals the paper. So it becomes reusable, reusable. Don't just waste and throw away in the environment. Use your stuff so, if you can. Let's see. Let's have a look at the, the stick. Clean my stick. Clean right. my stick. Like to just keep yeah. that one for mixing my let's resin. Have a look at the, have a look at the bubbles. Let's have minutes. a look. So and where's the alcohol spray? Here. You can see the reflection. There you go. You there see. Is a lip just a small amount of bubbles at the top there. Just a little line of bubbles, and I'm going to spray it. See it. I'm just going to get my alcohol spray. That's how easy it is. And of course, it doesn't affect your resin because the um, alcohol just evaporates within seconds anyway. That's almost crystal so, clear. It's getting there what now. I do. Maybe another minute while I'm just getting ready. All right, come on. Let's see what I'm going to do now. And then I will go ahead and I think and I need to pick some more colours because I don't think I've got enough the out there. That's the beauty of this resin. The bubbles come out so easy. <laughs> Come on, what else am I going to do? What I'll just do is really do with pouring. I think I need some 
resin mm, love and dust. I think. Hopefully not enough. I might not have enough resin for it all. Alright, let's pour a little bit in each. Alright, I'm gonna now gonna go ahead and even. pour um, equal amounts of resin into the thing. cups. I only need a small amount because I'm doing different colours in each one. And um, as you can see, they're only tiny little moulds. Uh, this mould in particular, while I'm pouring this, uh, so you're not bored and waiting, this mould I bought probably six months ago or four months ago uh, from Spotlight in Australia. It was uh, reduced to $2 in the sale. It's just a plastic cake topper mold. And, uh, and this is really showing you that you can be versatile with what you use with your resin. Um, these ones, um, the hard plastic is, it's hard to get your resin out of. So there's an easy way to do it. And I'm gonna show you that when it comes to demolding uh, these pieces. Um, but I'll tell you now, it's simple you literally once it's cured pop it in the freezer a couple of minutes and then that that will help you just pop them out of the mold um, and also spray the molds first with your um mold release spray also helps kiki i don't think it's going to be enough Sorry, to that's fill my dog. the actual um so yeah almost finished got a good amount of yeah. resin for each of these colors and I'm only going to need minute amounts of pigments um, to colour this because it's a very tiny amount of resin that I'm putting in That's here. Not bad. So I'm going to scrape out my jug because I don't want to waste any and I want to get all of the resin out of there as much as possible. I don't want to waste any, it's too expensive to waste as we all know. I don't like I'm to get waste these last resin. few bits out of here. I'm very gentle with my container so that I don't ruin it. And my uh, mixing stick, I use that over and over and over again um, because when you first get one of these mixing sticks, it because it's been wood, it does leave like lots of like, little bubbles. So once you've used it, just wipe it and then it whatever residue of the epoxy is left on it will seal it. And then the next time you use it, there won't be any air bubbles coming out of it. And I just wipe it every time and I use the same stick over and over and over again. Um, I so I don't use it for colours, colors. This, this one, just my I just keep stick. it for mixing. Please. There you okay. go. And then and I'll just give that a quick wipe out too, just to get the residue the out of there so it's not sticky. Stick the uh, and then that way you save your uh, silicone jugs because you don't want them to get leftover stuff stuck in. And sometimes, as they age, when you try and remove that so leftover, it, it will stick and really adhere really to the jug and then you will rip your jug. So I always wipe them out straight away. There's no cleaning issue. It's not left messy. I don't get any mess left in the next mix when I go and do my resin measurements. So best way to do it. Stay clean as you go. Pretty darn well, even in that out. I think I've got enough for everything. All right, so. Get my sticks. Get my mixing sticks. I also reuse these mixing sticks too. Over. I don't waste anything. Because the, the resin will seal your sticks with whatever you've had on it. So it won't mix in your next mix if you wipe it and keep on clear and keep on top of things. Alright, so this is that deep turquoise. You need, with this, these are very concentrated. When you get the pastes, they're very, very concentrated colours. You often pay a little bit more for them because of that fact. And even as I've scraped this off, that is too much pigment for the amount of resin I've got. Even with a little dip in, which you'll see in a minute, I'll literally dip it, turn a couple of times, I added too much. So, but, watch. So this tiny drop of resin in there, it's literally just covering the base. See, that was too much. So now, now I need to change the sticks because I don't want to add any more because it'll go virtually black. That's not the color I was looking for. So that's my mistake, wipe that clean. So even that little bit, that little dip was plenty. Very, very strong pigments they are. Just concentrated. 
but they should last you a very long time depending on how much you use them but uh, yeah you need very little but it's still very strong but I've it's such a done tiny now, so amount of resin it. that I'm using it really does not but this would be fine not. if I was doing it over um, a wider base because it wouldn't be so intense but because these are little deep pores um, it's dark you when it comes out consistency and the curing so that's quite dark yeah it's very dark but well, that's Still. okay right. that's okay and that's the first one put it out the way all right so put it up there out of the way so next let's do let's do our candy Ooh, apple red my this favorite. is spectacular uh, sorry candy apple blossom when did you, i don't know about people from england when we have bonfire night yeah, over there spot. We have the apples, and um, if your parents used to do, like my mum used to do, she would make the um, the candy, uh, and then she would pour it over the apples and set it. And this reminds me exactly of that colour. Exactly. Very happy times trying to eat through your apple, through the hard red candy outer layer. Mm -hmm. go Amazing how things that trigger you and take you back in your past, hey? Mm -hmm. right. So, see. very happy memories. I used to love Bonfire Night. But I live in Australia now and we don't do Bonfire Night over here because of the fire risk, obviously. So, yeah, it's nice for these little memories to pop up with my family. Now, if you don't want to see me mixing my colours, Look colors, how beautiful that shimmer is. Look at that. Laura. Oh my um, goodness. Look, you could almost eat it. It is, it is divine. The shimmer do, on it is spectacular. Right, really let's pretty. Do, let's do this one because I am going to. Alright, so let's do this ochre colour. Like. As I say, it's the closest thing to okay, orange that I've got in stock yeah, at the minute. Mix. Somebody wants to send me some orange or yellow. <laughs> I'd much appreciate it. Um, because I don't have them and every time I go to the shops to go pick more new pigment I'm going to get orange, I'm going to get yellow and then I get there and I go oh and I like this and I like this and I like this and for some reason I always put off buying orange and yellow uh, for the more unique beautiful shimmers that I need but then it comes to things like this and I need it and uh, yeah um, Silly me. Make sure you've got <laughs> that pigment. Anyway, this is the closest I've got to orange in, for a pumpkin. You're gonna end up with so I thought, go with it. Just go with it. Right, <laughs> it's it a nice colour though. It's spectacular and it works perfectly when I'm doing uh, boards where I've got the outback and I'm doing some sort of scenery um, artwork, then it works really, really well for like the red dirt that we have and the red sand that we have in Australia. All right, this is uh, Blue Mice. I think I said that I mentioned that earlier uh, by Lorez Expressions. And the shimmer in this blue is absolutely amazing. Uh, beautiful for ocean pours or boards that you're doing, um, or even jewelry. It's just lovely. So let's give that a mix. You'll see now what I mean. You don't need very much, but the colour's intense and it's just the shine, floats. so glitzy. And first mix and then just go slowly. Move my hand out of the way. While you would get be the, good. all the dust embedded in the okay. resin and then mix it thoroughly to make sure it's wow. mixed and you don't get any blobs of Whereas resin. Whereas expressions, that is really pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? It was one of those ones that popped up in my emails for their stock. There was a new the release. I've chosen from and uh, it was, it was like, yep, yep, got to have it. And you can build it. up your colours, you don't have, have it. to you know, build yes, a room I in a day for those new and a glitter there that don't have a lot. These things <laughs> are really like. expensive, it's not If you saw my collection, hobby, other than orange and yellow, uh, you'd be, you got them, you know, blown away. There is a lot of choices that I have. Just go slowly, don't But I like to be able to have those choices available and that you build it up slowly. For those beginners out there, don't think, oh my gosh, I've got to get this, 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 this. Just start with one or two, and uh, and then as you know, time goes by, you just gradually increase and add to your collection. And um, yeah, don't feel like Rome was built in a day that you have to 
get everything all in once. Oh, well, black ah, I'm open. trying the black cherry there and I can't get it open, so I've given up. <laughs> this one's the latte. All right, so this is the ice latte shimmer. Latte shimmer. And uh, it's the first time I've used it, so I just realized I've not used it before. I've had it for about a year. So it's really uh, thick at the bottom as it's settled because I've not mixed it, I've not used it. And Sometimes so, you get these things in as well and you've got yeah, to open it now. I didn't know why I've not used it. I thought I would have even tried it, but mm -hmm. it's obviously slipped through my many nets of pigments. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to give it a go now. Really good mix, I don't know if you can see, because it's separated. Uh, so I realise that it's separated completely, so I'm going to have to give it a really good mix. This takes that. a few minutes. so. You know, fast forward if you want to, because it does take a little while to get it really thoroughly it's remixed. Really I probably would have been yet. better putting it into a water bath and letting that base Ooh, warm up a bit before it. mixing. And because it's so full and brand new as well, when I tried to mix it and the base is quite thick, before. it's just poured that oil out of the pot. So here comes my trusty Coles wipes. To so clean up mess of aisle three. Keep your jars <laughs> and your products clean because uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with any company at all. Not the resin, not the micas, not the glitters, not um, the pastes, not the wipes, nothing. I'm not affiliated with anyone. So, if anybody would like to be affiliated and support me in my videos on my test and on my channel, feel free to contact me. But yeah, no, I'm not. No, I do just show you the products that I really use because I found they work. And if they help you in your projects, then uh, that's why I tell you. So, um, the companies obviously get free advertising from me. And that's okay. So, look at that. You can see the shimmer coming through, but you can see that big lump of the paste that was at the bottom. Might be a good idea. So it really could make that why I think it should have really been sat in a, a water bath had I realised before I opened it. I might put the black cherry but in mix, mix, mix. As I say, I don't want it lumpy. So give it really, it's not just going to stir and you've really got to make sure that it's, that oil is mixed right through so that cool. pigment that's settled at the bottom. So feel free to fast forward it now. I'm just going to go quiet while we mix. this longer than I mix my resins. <laughs> but you do want to make sure it's done properly. Don't do things in halves with resin making. You want it mixed, mixed properly. You don't want it to be not mixed, then add it to your resin and then your resin not pure because you didn't do something you skipped on. I don't want to do that. I'm not using a lot. I've already done it properly. much better now doesn't it no lumps in there now so yeah might be worthwhile for you to go through for those of you who's had these pastes sitting for a while just go through your containers every now and then and give them a really solid mix right. up and make sure they're not just sit at the bottom you don't want it to go off and then not be able to use it at all oh, it looks like i got into this just in the nick of time now I've just scraped off the sides of that mixing stick and that's all I'm using to colour that resin. Scrape off the colour pigments on the stick and put it back in. But yeah, it's got a really lovely shimmer to it. As it says in its name. Iced Latte Shimmer by Colour Obsession. I really don't. 
don't know why I didn't try it. And, you know, I've obviously had projects and orders to do that obviously didn't require it. But it's not lemony at all. I normally do tests as when I get new colours. I do a little test sample one so I can see what shades they're going to turn out. Right, I'm glad I've used that. Anyway, I'm glad I got to that now know. this one. Sure and I think I'm going to use it twice. And I think I'm going to add some glitter to it. And have two different ones of this colour. And really see what it comes out like. I might mix another one shortly. Actually, I know I did. <laughs> Don't know why I'm saying I might. Because I know I did. Alright, trying try again with that black cherry. It's just not having a bar of it. It's not happening. I'm just going to have to go okay, into so a warm bath that one that and see if I can release it okay, and then give it a good clean around that seal. Maybe I'll do, actually. It is a beautiful well. colour, that black cherry, I've got to say, by uh, Colour Obsession. So, an idea, isn't it? Okay, really clean too. I think this is when I decided that I was going to reuse it for another one as well and put some of the glitter in it. I think that before. Back to you do not want resin to go in your colours. Because this has got part A mixed into it, don't forget. If that's only got B in it, in that jar, you don't want to put part A in it. So give it a good wipe because you do not want that to mix before you put anything into it. I'm also going to just wipe that with that. So let's get that lid. I'm forever wiping down. I like to keep a relatively clean surface when I'm working. There's nothing worse than putting your hand down into a sticky mess or you know, put in another project and then mixing it when you didn't mean to mix it. There's nothing worse, so I'm forever wiping down things and trying to keep on top of it. I think I put a little bit more of the paste into this one. I think there was slightly more resin in the bottom of this cup too, which is why I did. And it did give a slightly different shade. So you can vary your shades and have it more opaque than others uh, with slightly more. But just remember to keep under that 6%. You don't want to go over 6% of your colours you're mixing um, so that you don't affect the resin curing abilities. So, there it is. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that? It really is like a latte. But the shimmer in it is really pretty. So I think we're going to add some... Of the champagne glitter champagne. to this one now. And I use my little crusty spoons for measurements, my little black spoons. And I don't want it to take over. I love those little black spoons I use for the uh, glitters and the micas um, because when you're doing like tests and you need to have equal amounts with the popsticks it's very difficult to measure how much you're putting in whereas with those little black spoons it can only hold a certain amount so you can you, I mean, it will never be absolutely oh, accurate, but through. you're pretty That's much really pretty. Uh, getting as close as you can to okay. consistent so, quantities um, of um, micas or glitters that you're adding into your product. So you can keep your test as close to uh, perfect as possible. Let's use a Alright, sorry about that. There was a siren going past because I live on a busy street. Here we are and um, this one's called Grey Lavender and um, it's a really delicate colour. Got a nice shimmer by Perlex. Really this is just, they're really only going to be blank Very screen. I'm just putting colours in because I want to see what these faces look like. Again um, you can vary the intensity the by in. how much of the um, colour on the background, we'll see a way to make long these don't go uh, over faces that six percent. So I'm putting the colour on the background, and then I'm going to put colour in the eyes at the front. So I'll just uh, make sure all my colours are mixed in, in eyes, really I'm well, all, because you don't want any floating powder in your piece. Oh, you want to make sure all that pigment is really well mixed in. Grey lavender by Perlex. Isn't that lovely? Stunning. And this, it almost looks like it's got it's lavender silver. It's called grey lavender. It's really pretty. Okay, so next we're going to use. I think I use a 
interference next from memory. What about reflex violet? Yeah, or it could be another lavender. Oh, it's a lavender. Reflex lavender. Uh, reflex violet. Sorry, my mistake. Reflux violet. This is beautiful, this shade. And when it cures, it's stunning. So just mix slowly when you first start to avoid the micas flying everywhere into the atmosphere. Um, until you've got them sort of mixed and then give them a good mix with your you don't want any lumps of colour or floating colour make sure they're fully coated and that is really lovely violet so that's really lovely so that's really lovely violet so that's lovely violet It's almost the same colour as wow, the stick. That is beautiful. Huh? That's really vibrant. Really pretty. Lovely. Okay, that's another one. I'm going to have to get moving soon because I'm going to run out of time. You have to be quick, don't you? Right, so next. Using the copper, I think it is. It's either copper or bronze. Yes, it's copper. That is sealed. Doesn't matter what colour's on the stick because it's coated in resin and set. Cured, so it's not going to mix in. Don't need too much. This is quite strong colour. That again by Perlex. This one turned out really good too when it, when it cured and I, I took it out of the mould. As you'll see later, it's one of my favourites. Didn't think it would be, but it was. It was really good. Really nice. Look at that. Look at that. Stunning. Alright, let's go. Alright, three more to go. What colours next? Oh, oh two big glitters. So with these, as I said before, they are super fine. It's like a dust. And um, I find with these, they suspend in the resin really well rather than sinking. You know, like a lot of glitters will just sink to the bottom of your mould. Um, this didn't do that. It stayed all the way through thickness and it was brilliant in the resin. You'll see later when we unmold, but um, I was really super happy with the quality of this glitter. Champagne. And it's really iridescent. Look at that. That's quite thick, so I'm going to have to move that one, I think. Because glitters do thicken up your resin quite quick if you use a lot of it. I might just pour that straight in. And I know we've got a good cover, so let's yeah. go with the bottom. And that's yeah. just so thick, I'm gonna, I poured it straight it's away. Seen. The other thing I find when you add glitters and you pour in, whoops, oh, just no, made a mess. Uh, and you, you pour in the glitters this, thick, Sarah? That's okay, they ca it can like start it. the process curing quite quickly with your resin. So with this, I poured it straight into my mould because I didn't want it sitting around and starting to thicken too fast. Jerry, I don't know why but it seems to. I could be wrong with my facts, but my experience is the resin starts curing quite quickly setting with the um, glitters in when it's thick glitter. I put four scoops of the spoons of the uh, glitter into my resin, so it was quite thick. I'm just using the cup there to scrape off the rest of the resin off the, off the pop stick. Era. Now I want to save the rest of that resin as well. The way to do that is to, I have, um, I don't know if everybody's seen them yet, but the silicone paint brushes uh, that you can buy online. I think I got mine from Wish. And um, they are superb because silicone against silicone, you can get a really good contact and so you can pick up a lot of the residue. If you try and use it stick, you've always got a load left behind that you can't get. But when it's silicone to silicone or silicone to plastic, it picks up really well. As you can see here, that it's not a lot of effort to scoop out that resin and try and clean it out. And then to also 
clean the surface of the mould as well. I got pretty much everything out before I had to wipe it. I didn't waste, waste any. Look at that. Much we easier with the silicone brushes. So we'll if you right can, products. get yourself these. These are one of those tools that I would highly recommend as being part of your basic toolkit. You won't regret it because it also helps uh, running around the edges of moulds so that you can uh, remove air bubbles as well so you don't get those little tiny um, air pockets at the side of your uh, finished products. Um, so yeah, part of your basic toolkit I think should be the silicone paint brushes. It really does help. Look at that um, champagne glitter, isn't that right, gorgeous? Let's do black opulence now. And so let's do the same with the black opulence. Again, these glitters are from our friend Laura. And um, Sherry Moulton calls her the glitter guru. Well, Sherry, you're absolutely right, she is. So I did, when I first met Laura, I, I live in Australia, obviously not the same country as Laura and I contacted her and then we decided that we'd have a video um, call and she showed me some of her glitters or should we say some, yeah some she showed me a lot and I didn't see the majority of it um, but for the colours and shades that I needed that's all I needed to see so she showed me different things she had we'll that she we'll recommended and um, one yeah, in the bottom she one. is definitely one in the top a glitter guru one. See for sure how they look with the, um, the two different glitters that I use in the test as well. For sure. Let's get a stick. Let's have a look. Beautiful. Look at that. That's very opulent. Laura, your glitters are amazing. Oh, there's a lot of this one. Must have poured extra resin on this one. There's <laughs> a deeper one. Dicky, stop. So shiny. Look at that. And then it's just not doing wow. me any favour, is it? Wow, wow, wow. Um, one. <laughs> That's a little bit. Can I just leave that for a minute? Because I might have plenty where I can mix. Let's get rid of the sticks. That. I think we've got one, got one more colour to choose, though. I've not done the interfere right. between. I think that's so, what I chose next. Yes. Maybe I'll wait until the end. One want to get that mixed and poured so let's get that opulent that black poured so that it doesn't go too thick let's do it in same as that one let's do it in that one mm. wow and because i've waited even after mixing i've left them so that the bubbles are all rising and out so you're reducing your chances of getting trap bubbles and um, i got zero and I do mean zero bubbles in these pieces when I unmolded them. Used uh, there was not a single extra fault extra resin in there at all. Um, for these. You know, sometimes you'll get like an air pocket in the in the face, or, and it makes it, really you know, not resin. usable or not a single one did I get because of the resin I use, and I let it sit for a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long. It's not like you have to wait long. It. Some of them you have to wait longer if it's a thicker really resin for those bubbles to rise and come out. But it's been say, such a thin viscosity, it just the air bubbles rise really well. So I didn't have any problems with that. These, as I say, are, these are not for any projects that I'm doing. These were simply playing with my colours, playing with glitters, um, and testing out what they look like in resin. It's handy when you're doing projects to have test pieces of your colours so that you can show people what it's going to look like when it's cured. Um, and I have lots of little bits like this where I have test I pieces that I, I use. Them to be, when I do my so when people want a certain colour or a certain look, you can show them and help them decide what they're looking for, what you've got is available. If you get my drift, these sticks and things I will wipe. Right, so let's go with the champagne. If you can see the bases in these moulds, the, the glitters, they're covering the whole faces. So the faces are actually not clear in the mould. You can sort of see the bottom ones. Uh, you can see the bottom faces next to that um, opulent champagne. 
So each one of them has got a different, well, some of them are repeated, but um, different faces. So when I put the colours on the back and I turned them over, you can't actually see the faces clearly. So I remixed these exact colours with uh, UV resin and poured them into the face holes and then cured them quickly so that you could see. And they turned out really well, but I'll show you that at the end, that process. So this is that um, iced latte shimmer with the opulent gold glitter. I think that's just the li iced latte shimmer also. Um, and mix things together to get your own creation of color and, and what's in your head uh, coming to fruition. See. I think it's going with glitter. Enjoy your I can see the bit of sparkle in there. And it looks darker. I think the darker one had the glitter in it. Yeah, pretty sure that's the one with the glitter in it. Don't waste any resin if I can help it. <laughs> bit of a sting, bit of a sting, part me. I try and get every last drop out if I can. Too expensive to waste. When you mix the pigments with the UV resin, if you keep it in a dark place, it won't cure either. It'll stay liquid. So those color piece, those colors that I had left over from doing the faces, I can still use them in another pour. I've done another video since this one, um, which is really exciting actually, because I don't think anybody else has done what I've done. Not that I've seen anywhere. Probably there may be somebody out there that's done what I've done, but. I've not seen a video and I've been doing this for over a year and I've not seen it yet so I'm hoping it's a first, I'm hoping, but uh, I'm going to release that one in a couple of days. Um, I've got a little bit more to do on that project and film it before I can release it, to finish it off before this I can edit. This is just the iced latte shimmer. This is just the iced latte now on its own without the glitter and pouring. I didn't put as much resin in this pot. <laughs> it's a bit um, stingy, shall I say. As I've said before, please feel free to fast forward through these colour pores if you wish to. I know it's a long video. But I do like to show everything as much as possible. Um, I know a lot of people like to see this process um, of what we do and what the colours look like. If this was in a coaster, how they pull the resin pulls from the outside in, you can see it actually pulling in the colour. Even on a small piece like that, it still pulls into the centre. So cool to watch. And with the shimmer happening, really pretty. This is a very strong colour, can you see? Not yet really. You'll see it shortly. This is one of my favourites in the turnouts. Very pretty colour. That pearl This one would look great in, in the Tree of Life as the tree trunk. Stunning 
as the trunk of the tree. What do you think? Alright, let's go with uh, this is that with reflux violet. Here's that reflux violet. Let's go with violet a by base. Base. This, this is another one of my favourites that turned out. And the ice, uh, the blue ice as well by Lorez Expressions. That one was really pretty, as you'll see in a bit. Really, really good. The uh, ice latte shimmer, go. um, the one without the glitter in the middle. Look how it's um, closed up now in that middle bit where it's drawn you know, and pulled into the centre. Like huh? Really clever how it does it. That changes completely from what you plan sometimes. Yeah, if you look at the bottom, that copper one is not pulling in the same as that shimmer. These are just really for me, for my blanks. And the opulence colours, they don't do either. The glitters, they just stay where they are. They don't sink, they don't drop, they don't move. It stays like suspended in the resin exactly where it was poured. It's really cool. reason I'm being against much out as well is I didn't make enough. I should have really made more resin. Uh, I didn't quite make enough of the quantity so I don't fill the containers to the top which, which I felt like I should have. So um, I think in a minute I do actually mix some more resin up just to top them up. Look at it. How rich is that? How rich is that? And you want a nice red my Laura's my board. It really is like red candied apple. This is my absolute favorite. You know, like cake. you get the it, uh, cured, in England, it was you get just it in, um, beautiful. Candies apples at bonfire time, bonfire night. Apples coated. And the shimmer. And that's and exactly you pour it. You can see like it's it, it, where you've stirred it. Which one should I do it on? The like shimmer stays in it. It's really pretty. Alright, thank you. I'll do that now. I really want to be able to see that color through the other side. Oh my goodness. Laura. Just eat that. Wow. When I was ordering, um, I did a live video with Laura. She 
shared with the ones that she got. So I went on for a specific thing and bought so much of the uh, glitters because they were just she liked, like, like, not much what colours do you like? Let me show you what I've got, what new what ones I've got. Colors. And she went through so many and this was one that, I, that she showed me. I was like, I've got to have it, put it in my order, I've got to buy it. It was just, and I'm so glad I did. So glad I did because waste not finding a beautiful not. red is hard. So is my this grandma is to say. I'm looking for it. Uh, look at that. Can you see it? Come on, look. This Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Stunning. <laughs> How intense is that red? You want a truly beautiful red, and reds are hard to find a really good red. Yeah, it's I hard feel. to find a good red. Um, yeah, good contact red. Laura and order this one. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. Put my name on it. It is beautiful. This is the um, deep turquoise. Can you see this? Look at the colour on the side of the of the container. You can see it better. And you can see around the edges of the pot right, is turquoise. So just it looks like a dark, dark, dark green because it's a deeper pour uh, setting in these bowls. But as I said, if it was a wider board, it wouldn't be as intense. Still nice though, and the effect was really good because it was a very clear face at the end product. If I had my time again, I would just literally dip it into the resin and out, and then stir it with a different stick rather than stirring it with that stick. Even though I scraped it off, I should have not used that to stir it because, uh, as I say, it's a very intense pigment in that colour. But that's why these test trials are good, isn't it? Because you get to learn before you use them in a major project. You get to learn what intensity they are, what you need to get the, the colour that you're desiring before you go and ruin your art piece or waste a load of resin mixing up a colour that's not right. And this is the... Um, so always start with these paints, I think. Just literally start with a dip. And uh, uh, less is more, you can always add, but you can't take away blue if you add too much in one go, you know. Now oh, here's that Lores Expressions Blue Ice. And this has got a really, really beautiful shimmer as well. This is one of my favourites. I know it sounds like I'm saying that all but I'm not. Pumpkins. I think I chose five, which were I'm my favourites. You know, I'm just doing it, winging it, and just experimenting with colours and seeing how colours react in resin that I've not used in a long time. So, you know, when you are also choosing other colours to use in projects, it's handy to have these colours mixed already so you can actually see what they're going to look like when they're mixed. Uh, it helps you choose the colours that are going to be right for your projects that you're doing. Also to show if you are selling your products um, and you you know take orders from people, you can actually show them what the pigments look like when they're mixed in resin, and um, it's a really good idea. And as you see, I'm not and rushing the process. I'm well. still doing it delicate. They, probably mix because I don't want to introduce bubbles in the So um, there's no rush. I've got quite a long and working time with this dress resin, it's not like you've got you 15 minutes to go get it done. Um, you do have time with this resin to sit well, and to let the bubbles immerse and then you know, mix your colours. Bear in mind though, I have only had nice very thin layers of the resin, so it's not over to either. Like. Because when you pour it deeper think, in your cup, you know? if you leave it, it will start you know, curing and get warm quicker right. and it's deeper. Okay, so this is the These have only got very shallow amounts of resin, so they haven't overheated fast at all. And, um, okay. 
this one was a good one too. I like the way this one turned out. It was more mostly pumpkin like with the colour. So I did like it. But still could have done with being a tad more orange. starts to move into the center and it changes as it's moving and the striations in that coloring are just spectacular they really are I can't even speak it about it and explain it I see it moving and changing before my very eyes I know have all done the same but it's just um, I think I put it in this video. Well, anyway, I did a Perlex interference green in that last one. All right, now I've got one more left. One more. See if I've only got like 20 seconds left. Or do I just left. wait and mix it on? I'll I don't pour think it I've got in. time to mix it's it. It's a tiny amount, really. It's not even a lot. Or do I just oh, mix up just some mix more it. and then have plenty? Might as well just mix up some more and add that in. Um, nope. Right, so I'm just going to pause you for a second while I mix Well, there you more. go. I'll be back in a second. Anyway, here we go. So, let me get it so you can see the colours. This is an Oculus uh, Champagne. And then the bronze from Perlex. This is from Laura's Art Corner. Uh, that's the Perlex Interference Gold. Uh, uh, Interference Green, sorry. There's the um, champagne that's from Color Expression Obsession, sorry. And that's got the um, opulence gold, opulence champagne, sorry, from Laura's Art Corner mixed in, which you can't see really at the minute, but it is in there. You can sort of get glimpses of it. There is the candy apple blossom. Isn't that strange? That is beautiful. That's the grey lavender. Maroon. And that is the um, Colour Obsession Ice Latte. That's what that one is. Ice Latte. Shimmer. That one's the Reflux uh, Violet from Perlex. That one's the Ice Blue from Lores. from uh, Laura's Art Corner. That's stunning. And this one is the dark teal, I think. Deep turquoise, sorry, my mistake. Deep turquoise. And that one is from a uh, composite warehouse in Perth, Australia. So there you go. I'll take a little picture. I know we've got a lot of glare. I'm sorry about the glare. So, um, I will see you tomorrow uh, for the demolding once it's been in the freezer, once it's cured, and I'll put it in the freezer for a few minutes, and then I can unmold it from this plastic mold. So, see you tomorrow for that process. Bye. Alright, so I'm well, fast forwarding this because this video is really getting up there in time. Um, and I just wanted to keep it clean. This is a long process. I think it took me like an hour and a half to do this because I was using UV resin and mixing it and curing it and mixing it and doing it and mixing it and curing it. So uh, I'm fast forwarding it a lot to keep this time down. So my apologies for this. Um, so there we go. They've popped out quite well. I could put them in the freezer for a couple of minutes. They come out quite easy, so um, as you can see, I'm showing you the faces here rather quickly. You can't really see them. 
Uh, that's the interference green. You can just see the green up against the black background. Uh, yeah, the colours are beautiful and the shimmer, you can't see the faces. So the choices that I'm doing now, as I said before, was getting the UV resin, which I use Let's Resin, UV resin, which I find is really good. Uh, and I'm going to mix the pigments to match the colours that I've used um, for the backgrounds. And I'm going to highlight those faces on these um, little pumpkins. So they've turned out really well. I'm really happy. No bubbles in them at all. I'm going to get rid of these cups out of the way. Get a clean surface and start mixing. I'm getting all the colours back out again. So yeah, I really need to speed this up because it was because they're so delicate and so tiny and their rims are very, very um, shallow. You don't want to put too much in at once, and because you put pigment in the UV, you want to also do it in very thin layers so that the UV rays can cure it properly. If you do it too thick, you'll cure the top surface. And at the end, um, oh, actually not this one, on another one, on another project I did, I actually did this process where I did it too thick and I cured the top layer and then I squeezed it and out came shooting the liquid uh, from underneath that hadn't cured because the rays couldn't get to it. So it is a process, this one, where you have to do thin layers at a time and then cure it. Uh, I'm shielding the pigments as well with my hand because I don't want to keep turning the machine on and off. Um, all the time so I shield in the little containers and while mixing it and putting it onto my little pumpkins so that I don't have it curing in my hand now that's why I've got it sort of scooped away from there you can't see it very well so my apologies but there was method to the mad my madness some of these come out really clear as you can see here like the faces are really identified some of them should have gone slightly darker with the pigment. So I'm just putting the second layer on this to make it uh, darker and stand out more. See how beautiful this was? I love this one. Now this one I had a black, I did the black background and then the interference green on top of the black to try and make that green pop in the colour. But it didn't make a lot of difference, but it did make a little bit. You can see the green more so in the face. All right. Again, I'm shielding, just turn up that machine off for a bit now, actually. I mix a couple of the colors. And these are the glitters. not mixing very much at all with the candy apple blossom. Oh my goodness, I just love it, Laura. Oh. I'm holding it onto the lamp there because the piece is on such an angle and it's rounded I want to cure it quite quickly so that the resin doesn't start pooling to one side and then you're having a thick area and a thin area of your resin or a blank area so I pour it and get it under quickly to cure it and set it in its place so it stays where I want it um, on the flatter ones I didn't need to do that but on the ones that are really curved um, I just held it under there quickly just to get it cured You can see it's a process of going back in, curing, back in, curing, and this is why it took so long to do. That's why I fast forwarded it so much so that uh, you're not watching that tedious pro progress that I did. I think next time when I do these, I'm going to try um, and paint inside the mold for the faces first and then pour the resin on if I can do it. But I'm going to have to do it with UV to keep the resin in place because, as you know, when you put resin into plastic it's going to pull away from the edges instantly um, which I don't want it to do 
espresso. And the two iced lattes, one with the opulent champagne glitter and one without. using my silicone paintbrush it's easy to clean if you use a normal uh, paintbrush it's very difficult to keep the resin from going hard in the bristles I find and um, so this way just an easy wipe at the end when you've used it and you can reuse it for all the colors and uh, yeah I find it really good makes the process a lot easier Perlex Reflux Violet. Again, I'm going to thin the layer first and then come over and make it stronger. Here's some of them now that I've finished curing. I'm starting to get my collection up. These are really good to do. You can then, the idea of doing these at the moment which I figured now that I'm doing the faces and filling in those areas, I can't really do it. But uh, with these ones, I'm going to have to redo the process again. But uh, the idea was that I was going to do these as blanks and then um, mold them in silicone so that they're a lot easier to get in and out of rather than having to freeze the plastic uh, mold. And the plastic mold's only going to last so long, you know, before it cracks. Um, so yeah, the idea was to do these as blanks, but then once I realized I couldn't see the faces because of the glitter, um, I filled in those spaces, those voids to make those faces pop. And so now if I was to mold them in silicone, I'd have a flat surface because there's no detail of the fe face features. So I just need to do a clear blanks of them and then I can mold them into silicone. Look at that one. That's the copper, wasn't that cool? Oh, this is another favourite. This one turned out really well as well. I try and put the colour here into the plastic mould and cure it in place. But then I, when I was doing it on the mouth, it spilt before it cured. <laughs> so I'll have to try harder and just be doing that rather than doing other projects so that I can control it. Yeah, the eyes are okay, and then I did the mouth, and that was not a failure, because it's so curved, you see, so the resin wants to pull. So it's a bit tricky to do. I'd have to do it very slowly, do bit by bit. I think if it was not plastic and it was silicone, it'd be easier to do. But I've also got to get a clear silicone, I think. Uh, which I've only got the deep blue silicone, which is not going to be ideal for this mold. So I want to get a clear silicone so that the UV rays can get through on both sides of the mold. Because you don't want to cure the top but not the underneath before you demold it. This is the grey lavender. Now I actually put a little bit extra of the pigment in this to make it pop because it's such a pale colour. Um, so I put a little bit extra to make those um, facial features pop out a bit more against the very pale background. I didn't feel this one, the opulence champagne facial features popped very well because it's so glitzy everywhere that it was hard to see it. It did on the black one because of the silver and the black contrast, but the silver and the gold contrast was too close. So it just didn't pop as much. That one was fantastic. That's one of my favorites, the uh, blue ice. Let's put a second one, it's 
lay it on the uh, face. This is finished, but you can't really, it's not a very defined face. A bit disappointing. So there you have it. All done. Super happy with the way they've all turned out. So there you go.